Uh, NeuroTracker uh, is definitely something that was developed for to optimize you know, people's performance, people's functions. And it, it's based on the few uh, fundamental principles of how the brain works. Um, essentially, the interest started with how we deal with dynamic, complex dynamic scenes. So how we deal with the world out there, okay? Uh, you're walking in a crowd, you're going in traffic, you're driving, you're playing sports. These have specific demands on the brain. And um, your ability to process this, not only is it relatively complex, but actually is trainable, it's plastic. We can improve this process. And this is how we sort of uh, uh, develop the, the NeuroTracker principles. We have to have something that's complex enough for the brain to sort of exercise and improve in its functions, but at the same time is context-free to a certain extent. Uh, uh, where we, you know, we, we're really attacking or addressing those, those basic principles that are, are fundamental capacities of the brain to process information. So, you're looking at, at spheres that are just floating in, in space and then all of a sudden a subset of these, let's say four, are identified or indexed. Just that, just that primer says these are the four important ones, now you have to track those no matter what. So, right after that, things start moving in a random way, in random directions, and there are things that happen. You know, you're trying to track your object, but all of a sudden, you know, they, 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 let's say two objects you're tracking, they're getting away from one another. So now you have to extend your attention zone, and then they come back, and you have to sort of retract, and so on. So there's all this stuff that's happening, and you've got these different speeds to deal with, and so on. So that's the basic environment where your brain is working. And while it's doing that, it's soliciting attention systems, you know, or the dynamic attention, you know, sustained attention, because you have to sustain that for over a certain period. It, it works on, on, on these systems. Then it stops. Okay, so while this goes on for a number of seconds, then it stops, and then we ask you to identify the items that we indexed. And if you get them right, it speeds up. So the next time, the next trial, the speed, the virtual speed of the objects is, is higher. Uh, but if you make a mistake, it slows down. And that way it adapts in what, a st what we call a staircase fashion for each individual's needs. You'll get your score and it's going to be just as difficult for the, the younger guy as the older guy. Why? Because it adjusts your speed. So of course the average speed will be a lot faster for the elite than for the others. But the point is it finds your hot spot, if you will, your zone of brain activity. And this way you get a measure for everybody. Everyone gets their specific measure. It's adapted to you. And this is where you sort of match as you go along. You can, get, you can see your speeds. You can see your ability to improve on this task. Just get better and better and better and better. This improvement in ability that we see clearly on the NeuroTracker score relates to real function, relates to other abilities. So we've shown that this improvement sort of also correlates with improvement in other things that you did not train that require certain, certain mental abilities, whether it be attention measures, uh, brain function, abilities in the field when it comes to sports, or, or abilities in anticipating other people's body kinematics or movements to, you know, to avoid collisions, things like that. So, so it's not just getting better at this particular exercise, it's getting your brain better, getting your brain more efficient at what it does.